So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I built my solder fume extractor. Now there are plenty solder fume extractors on the market, so why did I bother building my own? Well, I wanted my solder fume extractor to have one very special feature, and that was to be dual power. It can run off a wall brick like this, or it can run off three 18650 lithium cells, which you just remove the bottom cover, and you can take out the cells and replace them as needed. My fume extractor also uses an activated charcoal carbon filter. Probably got that wrong, but you get what I mean. It's activated carbon, it takes stuff out of the air. It uses a Noctua 140mm computer fan, but it is a bit of a specialised computer fan. It pumps a lot of air, more on that later. And for once, I can say that this product sucks. In a good way though. Let me show you. I've got some rosin here, which I'm just going to melt with my soldering iron. Pretty cool, eh? It does suck. What did I say? It sucks. Yeah, you know it does. Ooh, how to make PCB life hack video. Hello and welcome back to another five minute crafts video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make fresh PCBs from stuff you have lying around your house. Oh, I think they're ready. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. Check out these straight out of the microwave. Oh, they're still hot. So it's really that simple guys. You too can make PCBs at home using this method. Honest. And that's it. It's the last life hack video I'm ever watching. Unfortunately, making professional PCBs at home isn't easy, but with JLC PCB, they make it so affordable that you don't have to. Starting from as little as $2 for 5 PCBs, they offer fast production time, a wide range of design options and colours to choose from. And they also offer SMD assembly, meaning your circuit boards can be delivered to your door ready to go right out of the box. Try out JLC PCB for your next PCB project. If you want to learn more about this project and its components, then follow the link in the description to find this project on my website. I purchased the carbon filter as a large sheet which I could cut down to size, and it's quite cost effective doing it this way. If you're anything like me, you'll probably wonder how effective the filtration is, and that's certainly a good question. I don't have the specialised equipment to measure the air quality, however I'm certain it doesn't filter out everything, since I can visibly see some smoke exhaust out the back of the extractor. So does that mean it's useless? Well not in my opinion. In my workshop all I had to do was prevent the smoke from concentrating around my immediate work area, and this firm extractor does that. It sucks away the concentrated smoke and blows it away from my immediate work area. Let's quickly talk about fan selection. Most 140mm computer fans are designed to operate with near silence in mind. However, near silence has its trade-offs, with lower performance figures with regards to airflow and static pressure. If you need performance, ultimately you have to sacrifice silence to gain high airflow and static pressure. And that's exactly what Noctua's industrial fan series offers. Seriously, this fan can give you more than a windswept look. To demonstrate the difference between a typical computer fan and Noctua's industrial fan, I placed my fume extractor 250mm away from my iron. I then dabbed flux rosin onto the hot iron to produce smoke. Through experimentation I found 250mm is the furthest distance where the extractor was reliably capturing the smoke. I repeated the same test scenario, only this time with a more typical 140mm computer fan. Now 
The fan failed to effectively capture the smoke, with most of the smoke drifting away from the extractor. Ultimately, the bottom line was the fan had to be moved at least 150mm or closer to be what I'd consider effective. Clearly the Noctua industrial fan was the best option for the job, and it's not like you're compromising much for the performance, coming in at 58 decibels. This project uses a number of 3D printed components. Download links for the STL files will be in the video's description. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, then there's always the option to use a 3D printing service. Quite often they're cheaper than you'd think. The fan connector can be cut off. This fan features four wires. Besides ground and plus 12 volts, the other two wires are for measuring fan speed and PWM control. For this project, we really only require the ground and 12 volt wires, so the other two wires are removed. While I appreciate the craftsmanship and quality that goes into Noctua's products, I know I'm not alone when I say I seriously question their color palette so the Winnie the Pooh brown vibration dampers were binned. When mounting the fan, pay attention to the airflow direction indicators on the side. The fan should suck air through the front of the extractor. To prevent objects or stray fingers being sliced by rotating fan blades, a rear fan cover is absolutely necessary. My fan came with rubber cable sleeving, so I cut a short piece off and used it to shield the wires between the fan and housing. The Schottky diode is connected to the positive output terminal of the battery compartment. In case I have a brain fart and install the 18650s backwards, this will prevent the circuit from reverse polarity. If you want to learn more about the different types of reverse polarity protection, then click the link that pops up in the corner. The wiring for this project is pretty straightforward, however if you're interested, on my project page I'll include a simple wiring diagram if anyone needs it.
So thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like. It helps the channel out massively. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Oh, also, thank you very much to my Patreon subscribers. Can't forget you guys. You guys are awesome. See you in the next video. Bye for now.